Everyone's mad at Gerard Pique, and it's not just because of his comments about what Espanol supporters whistles, uh, what they do for him. No, we won't get into that. There's actually something much more worrying, more worrying than how opposing supporters whistles get the man going. We're talking a close relationship with Spanish football's president and a massive payout for Pique and his company worth somewhere around 24 million euros. Hey guys, I'm Adrian. Thanks for joining us here at Rabona TV, us being myself and my pal Plantini. And today we're going through the bombshell series of articles that was released by El Confidencial recently surrounding Gerard Pique, his close relationship with Luis Rubiales, some leaked texts and audio, the asking for favors from Pique to Rubiales, and so on. There is a lot to get into here, guys, and these articles were slowly released throughout the week last week, none released this week so far. So let's get into this. No speculation, just what we know so far, unless you get the big my opinion alert. By the way, I've linked to all of my sources in case you want to read these articles for yourself. We'll start with some of the less egregious actions, relatively speaking, but before we do that, let's give a shout out to One Football, where I actually heard about this story firsthand. So you're interested in football in general, and you want to get, be kept up to date with the fastest breaking news as it happens? Easy. Just download the app for free using the link below, follow the clubs, competitions, or even players that you care the most about from around the world, and One Football will custom tailor your news feed to bring you only the news you are interested in. Plus, with all of the videos, match highlights, live streaming matches, the transfer tracker, and so much more at your disposal, One Football really is the best app to stay in the know in the football world. So use the link in the description or scan this QR code to download One Football and become that annoying know-it-all football fan that you've always dreamed of being in your friends group. <laughs> Thanks again for supporting the channel, guys. Through all of the leaked files and texts, which have been verified as real and have been referred to as the Supercopa files, one of the leaks that is not so bad, at least in comparison to the sum of the other leaks, was Piqué asking Rubiales if he could help Piqué get into the Spanish national team for the 2020 Olympics in Japan. Here's what Piqué said in one of the leaked audio files, and Ruby of course, is Rubiales, the head of the Spanish Football Federation. Quote, you have to do this for me, Ruby. You have to make it happen. We have to keep it a secret and talk to the coach. I'll go to Madrid and we sit with him. We have to do it in a way that it's not out anywhere. The three of us have to keep this very secret until the end, don't you think? And then Rubiales replied saying, quote, Yes, we have to keep it a secret, and if the coach wants to do it, let's go ahead with it. I'd be thrilled. Rubiales told Pique that he would talk to the coach of the Olympic side, Luis de la Fuente, after they had qualified for the Olympics. Rubiales later responded to the leaks regarding the Olympic squad by saying, quote, I talked to de la Fuente about him and about other players as well. I told him that some called and that he had to make his own decision. Pique wasn't the only player who called. But like I said, this is absolutely not one of the most egregious things that was revealed through the audio leaks. Another one, as we sort of move up the mountain of controversies, would be Pique trying to get Sergio Ramos involved in his alleged coup to remove the president of the Players' Union. Without getting too far into the details, as we kind of want to focus our attention on the Super Cup information, PK and Sergio Ramos seemingly had a conversation about Luis Rubiales, the president of the Spanish Football Federation, and David Aganzo, the president of Spain's Players Union, referred to as AFE. Now, According to El Confidencial and Marca, amongst many other sources, Pique and Rubiales were allegedly looking to Sergio Ramos to support Rubiales over Aganzo, as both Rubiales and Aganzo have been involved in a power struggle in Spanish football, and based on Ramos's response, he's well aware of that. As he said, quote, The war started and now he wants to kill him because Ruby wants to rule in the Federation and in the AFE. Also in the voice note, Ramos goes over the drama between Rubiales and Aganzo, how they were once close, how they aren't anymore, friendship with Ruby is over, <laughs> and the overall power struggle between the two, before addressing Pique's request to show support for Rubiales. By the way, Jerry, of course, is Gerard Pique. So Ramos said, quote, So this is also a very sensitive issue, Jerry. And I with Aganzo, obviously, I've already told you, the relationship was correct and professional for belonging to the union and defending the interests of the players. But I don't have anything with him either. And after the ugly thing he did to me, I have given up on him. I think this is not our issue. It is an issue. Are we asking for the resignation of AFE president with Rubiales really behind it? I don't know. I think that here it is their issue so that they can solve it among themselves. 
PK, of course, forwarded this voice note straight to Rubiales himself, and the president didn't seem too keen on him doing so, as he simply responded, quote, You don't need to send me anything, because it wasn't the time to talk to Sergio, in my opinion. PK and Sergio Ramos must have a fantastic relationship, all things considered. <laughs> One of the other things that has plenty of Spanish football supporters incredibly mad are the messages shared between PK and Rubiales surrounding refereeing decisions that have gone against Barcelona. In particular, one call from December of 2019 against Real Sociedad in which PK believed they should have been awarded a penalty. There isn't much to go on here, just PK complaining about the referee, Rubiales saying he didn't see it, and then assuring PK that with him in charge, there is, quote, no desire to harm or benefit anyone, you know? End quote. Okay, this is where we start to really get into the stuff that is causing controversy in Spanish football. We need to explain what Cosmos is first, however. Cosmos Holdings is a company that was set up basically as an investment holding company to house PK's investments in the sports media landscape, as written on their own website. One of the co-founders of Cosmos is Hiroshi Mikitani, the CEO of Japanese conglomerate Rakuten. Rakuten, the kit sponsors of Barcelona. Cosmos has their hands in a few different pots. There is, of course, the production company, which produced Antoine Griezmann's infamous The Decision. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny, but I just find it funny thinking back to that time when they went through this huge documentary only for Griezmann to stay with Atleti for another season. It just was a huge womp ending. Then, Cosmos has also purchased the rights to Ligue 1 and Ligue 2 distribution in Spain. PK and Cosmos secured this deal shortly after Lionel Messi had signed for PSG. Cosmos also has a controlling stake in Andorra FC, a third division team that competes in Spain and a topic of conversation between PK and Rubiales as well. When CF Royce, a now defunct team, would lose their spot in the league thanks to non-payment, PK messaged Rubiales about FC Andorra taking their spot, which they indeed did, much to the chagrin of other clubs that felt that they had a better claim to the spot vacated by Royce. Then, during the pandemic, PK sent a voice note to Rubiales asking that he allow Andorra to play in a different group than one they usually would, as playing with the Catalan clubs would be difficult for them. He asked for an easier group, essentially, and he suggested Rubiales avoid the controversy by reformatting the competition so that Andorra could be placed in a group with just less Catalan teams. Ultimately, his requests were denied, despite his best efforts to make them happen. Cosmos are also behind the Davis Cup and their revamp of that tournament, a top-tier tennis tournament, and of course, the most pertinent thing they have been a part of, at least for this video, was the Spanish Super Cup. As for the Supercopa, this is where the heat has been on PK and his company Cosmos. The audio files point to 2018 where PK had suggested to Rubiales that they change the format of the competition so that more teams could be involved, thus generating more income and allegedly the federation president asked him to seek out a place to play and people to sponsor the tournament. With all of his connections in the international sports media landscape, PK and Cosmos set up a meeting between the Spanish Federation and the Saudis. And during the 2019-20 season, the Spanish Super Cup had its swan song four-team tournament in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Prior to that, it was just like any other Super Cup, a one-off match played at the beginning of the season. As part of the leaks, you can hear PK telling Rubiales that they could convince an apprehensive Real Madrid with a larger payout, saying things like, quote, Let's see, Ruby, if it's about money, if Real Madrid would go for eight, Listen bro, Madrid get paid 8 million and 8 to Barca. The others get 2 million and 1 million. That's 19 and the Federation are left with 6 million. Before, you were left with nothing. Now you are left with 6 big ones. And we'll pressure Saudi Arabia and maybe we can get... We'll tell them that if not, if they don't agree to pay, Madrid won't go and we'll get 1 million more or 2 million. Before playing it in Spain, you are not going to make even three. It's worth thinking about if money is the issue. Where the controversy comes in is that this could be in violation of a federation statute regarding players competing in tournaments that they have helped set up or change the structure of. But the other one that's catching headlines is how Cosmos received 24 million euros for their involvement in brokering this deal between the Spanish Football Federation and Saudi Arabia. PK's company, that is, Cosmos, receiving 24 million euros for their involvement. 
PK has not denied the claims, really, saying that he has nothing to hide and that he is quite proud of the fact that he was able to secure the cup deal for the Spanish Football Federation. PK has said that he is able to, quote, separate a commercial deal from my job as a player, end quote. And when asked whether he saw this as a conflict of interest, he claimed that, quote, a conflict of interest will depend on each person's own values. Make of that what you will, but Rubiales sees no issue with it when addressing PK being involved with the Super Cup deal, as he said, quote, I wish there were more players like PK who are capable of doing other things. I've always pushed to keep players from being done after they stop playing. This may have been just Rubiales failing to address the issue properly, or it may be Rubiales being disingenuous, as nobody would really take issue with a player retiring and then going on to work for the Spanish Football Federation. Sure, there would always be suspicions of favoritism, given the tribalism of football, but where people are taking exception to what Rubiales said is that Piquet hasn't stopped playing. He's still very much a part of FC Barcelona, having played over 3,000 minutes amongst 39 appearances. The man is very much a starter for Barca still. And I think that's where most of the outrage over this lies. Opinion alert, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, the outrage likely lies in an individual who is still playing in La Liga and representing one of the biggest clubs, also having a hand in some of the deals that the league is making, has some influence, and who is a collaborator with the president of the Spanish Football Federation, and seemingly has a very close relationship. As far as suggesting numbers for the payouts for each team, suggesting a new structure for a tournament. That smells a bit funky, no? That's some rotten jamón right there. Or at least, as Pique says, depending on your own values. The problem doesn't seem to be a legal one, more so an ethical one. There may be some issues for Rubiales himself in regard to the Federation's breach of Article 24, which shows that no third party may receive commission payments while helping to negotiate agreements between the Federation and another party. In fact, back in 2019, Rubiales spoke to Cope Radio and he acknowledged the involvement of Cosmos, but said that they simply presented them to the Saudi Arabian party involved in the negotiations. They didn't receive any payment. Unfortunately for Rubiales, a document has been released which shows that the Federation would indeed cancel their agreement to bring the Super Cup to Saudi Arabia if Cosmos did not receive their commission payments. On top of that, as noted by Dermot Corrigan of The Athletic, another concern is Article 22 of the Federation Institutes, which is designed to prevent even the impression of any conflicts of interest between those taking part in tournaments, as Piquet did, and those deciding how they are run. The insinuation being that given the leaks of text and voice notes, it looks like PK could quite possibly have had quite the role in deciding the format and the potential payments that each of the participants would receive for playing. Now, whether there will be any consequences of this remains to be seen, as both Rubiales and Pique don't seem to be too bothered about it. In fact, Rubiales is all in on the Super Cup in Saudi Arabia. He likes the competition and sees the money they've received as sort of a saving grace for Spanish football, according to some sources. As for Pique, while he has been a bit defensive at times about it, he is often quite transparent to his credit. And this may just come across as a bit embarrassing for himself and Rubiales, but they just hope that it will blow over. Again, as far as we know, there hasn't been any illegal activity, leaning more toward unethical or a conflict of interest. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you think about all of this. Is it wrong for players to be involved in this kind of thing while still playing, or you're okay with it? I'm Adrian. This is Rabona TV, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.